bit of a whirlwind really it's kind of only hit starting to hit home that, that I'm heading off and um, you know I think back coming over at the age of 25 25 26 and um, not really knowing what to expect but um, you know growing up watching watching the rugby uh, from Dublin as a young lad and um, excited to come over and play in the Premiership and, and compete in one of the best leagues in the world so um, to, to now and, and I think um, the amount I've learned, uh, the great people I've met, great people I've worked with, and um, place will always have like a, a soft spot in my heart. Like I've, I've really enjoyed my time here, and I've developed so much as a person as well. So, um, just really grateful for for, for my time here. And uh, like thinking back six years, there's there has been highs and lows, you know. But um, I, have a, I have a lot of fond memories. Um, you obviously stayed in the Premiership, moving on to Bristol. Um, but so you had a, a great time at Connor, won Pro 14 there. But what comparisons you can take from Pro 14 to moving over to Sale, and what, what's the difference in the two leagues? Um, I would say, like playing in Connacht, there's probably the the base of of players is is Irish, so you're pretty familiar with everything. I think moving over to a new league, a new well, new country, like it's not too dissimilar, but it there are a lot a lot of changes. So, um, you know, I think. Probably culturally, like settling into England, there are dif differences. I think there's probably differences between Manchester and Bristol, where I am going. But the the people I've met as well from from all over the world, like the amount of sort of different nationalities I've played with and learned about their cultures, and um, it's probably you de you develop your character a lot more because I think when you're playing in Ireland, um, you kind of know what what guys are like, or you just been you've been raised raised uh, in that country. So from early age, you you, you kind of have an understanding of the of the way things are, the way people are, uh, or you think you do, I guess. But um, that's probably be, be one of the biggest biggest things here, and a really enjoyable aspect of playing at Sale and meeting Rus Russians, uh, Samoans, Kiwis, Australians, and obviously the, the South African contingent here, and learning about them. So um, yeah, it's been it's been awesome getting to know, getting to know the lads and, and playing with them as well. And you touched on it briefly there, but. Um Manchester's a city that's um, sort of thought well of by a lot of Irish people. There's a lot of United fans over in Ireland. But how have you found it living in the city? Uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of, lot of United fans, a lot of Liverpool fans, like um, City fans as well now uh, cropping up. But I think my dad been the United fan. I've been to Manchester um, four or five times, come over for games. Um, and like coming back, it was pretty. It was pretty cool coming back, and the areas I've been to, going to Old Trafford, um, those sort of those sort of little experience that I really cherished as a kid growing up, and then coming back and living here. Like I never would have imagined that I, w I would have lived in Manchester, but I've absolutely loved it. Like I haven't really, uh, not one for the for the city after living in, in New York City, but um, I, d I don't know, just the little little suburbs and little villages around the place. Like it's it's. Yeah, it's been amazing. I think my, my wife been American. She's she's loved that as well, which is completely different to what she's used to in, in the states. And just to touch on the highs and lows you've experienced at the club. If you had to pick a moment that stands out in your mind as a, as a personal high, what would that be? Personal high. Um, I think last last year, like obviously ended obviously ended in disappointment, but um, you know finally getting into that top four, uh, which is probably a big milestone for. For the club and for the players here, because um, moving over, like you said, like kind of my first year of professional rugby, I'd, I'd won a, a trophy and been part of a successful team, which was like the most incredible feeling ever. And then um, probably came to say at a different stage and the transition stage, and um, there's an influx of new players coming in, and um, you know the hard work that it took to to get us to the point where we we got to a top four. You know, it, was, it wasn't easy by any any stretch, and um just made probably made me appreciate like how how difficult it is to to win and how competitive this league is and um that's one of the like great feelings like it's probably um the expectation to come over is that obviously you want you want to win trophies any player wants to win trophies win medals and um the makes you appreciate how, one how difficult that is but then two how um leaving this club and now where it is, it's always pushing for the top four and, and pushing for the, the, the top spots in Europe as well. So, um, like that's a, that's a really good feeling to 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 leave on. And um, I wish 
I, I wish more and more of that for, for the club. And what about Lowe's? You've had, you've had your fair share of injury setbacks. I've, I've seen you score tries and get up injured and all sorts of stuff. Um, what's been the most challenging moment of your time here? I think it is the injuries. I think when I first when I first moved over, my first first game of the Premiership, I ended up in, injuring my hamstring um, as a result of Simon, Simon Hammersley. But um, yeah, I guess I guess it is that you want like you want to come in, you want to contribute and make an impact, or just you just want to play and. It's very difficult settling into a new environment when you don't play because, um, you know, you just the, the the relationships you build are, are on and off the pitch. But it's it's you gain your respect on the pitch and and in the train in the training sessions week in week out. And um, the, yeah, the lows are were probably though like those first two years where I was trying to find my feet and settling into a new environment and you got new new coaches and all that and you. The feeling as a young guy is you want you want to impress, and when obviously you get an injury, you just unfortunately you, you can't do that. So it's kind of back to the drawing back to the drawing board. So um, yeah, the the, the injuries have definitely been a low, but then I guess the, the learning is that in well, my, my body's not ready, and what can I do to improve? And then you probably look uh, at other areas of the game that you you want to develop, and um, I think as well. <laughs> With the injuries, you probably get more engagement with the community and the fans, and going out and, and doing the the community work with the community team. So th the negative thing is you're not playing, but then there's the positive of that is yeah, you get to get to know the other other members of the staff that that, that work in the building that you, you wouldn't really see that much if, if you're you're playing the whole time. So uh, gave me an opportunity to, to engage with the people and and the people behind this 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 club, which was which was amazing as well. And just a couple more. So. What have you learned about yourself during the time? Uh, <laughs> what have I learned about myself? Um, I guess just to calm down uh, and not not take things too serious. I think um, always like when you, as I say, when you come over, you want stuff to happen. You want stuff to happen, and you try to go from A to Z straight away, and instead of. I guess people say say the, the, the cliche of um, trust the process and that, but um, yeah, I guess as a young guy, I was always always in a rush, always wanting to to impress, and um, I think the learning from that is like impress myself, um, keep keep working hard, keep like be dedicated to what I do, like it's a passion of mine, rugby and. Um, even relate relationships and developing relationships, like it's, I'm very passionate about that too. So, um, not 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 to always be in a rush, I guess, is is would be the the biggest learning and take my time and allow allow things to unfold um, and and enjoy it really. Yeah, I think at the beginning, as I said, in a rush, want things to happen and stress myself out, and that's as I think that's why my my body ended up breaking down on me because I was uh, always stressing myself out internally. What's the one thing you'll miss about being a shark? Um, <laughs> um, oh, listen, there's there's many things like I, I will miss, um, but they, I think it's, it's probably the the people that are involved in the club. Um, that extends to, to to fans as well and the support. It's um, like I said, it's. From the age of, from the age of twenty one, I've been kind of hopping around the world, and this six years living in Manchester, and it it is my it is my home uh, for the next next month. But um, I've just I felt so welcomed, I felt so supported, um, and I've also had the, been challenged as well. And um, you know, people have been here to help help me develop in in many areas. So um, yeah, listen, I could list off like everybody in this building, like from. Ground staff, kit men, chefs, community, like I've had uh, built many, many good friendships throughout the, the six years. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just be grateful for, for the people that, that have invested time into me and that I've worked with. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I've got a lot of love for them.